Hello everyone and welcome to session three of Learn with a Beginner, where I coach a beginner to AoE4 Amsel through the beginning understandings of the game, onward and upward through the ladder. Uh, Amsel has started off by playing just with the AI, and so far in sessions one and two, he went from barely being able to play against the hard AI to the beginning of this session, him defeating the hardest AI. Uh, if you missed the first session, I suggest you go back. It's titled Learner for Beginner Session 1 and 2. So you can see his starting goals, especially if you're someone who's new to the game and wanting to kind of take part in this journey yourself. Uh, this session is going to focus more on his upcoming goals and the results of them. If you're interested in potentially doing your own coaching, please feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Check the description in this video to see that. As, as, as we open the game, I just want to remind us the thing we're really looking for is you being aggressive, you efficiently using your resources, and you also using Jean to her best of her abilities. That means using her abilities, using what makes her special to help you win the game, and not right. just and 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 not losing her or misusing her abilities. So but after after our last last session, I was looking on the the uh, subreddit as well. I didn't realize that she was so busted right now. So it, I'm. Am I getting like carried by using Jean right now? No. Or you know, okay, cool. Because I'm just trying to make sure I don't have a crutch, basically. <laughs> by I think people are struggling to counter her because people are still learning how to play against her. I think what makes this Civ unique compared to others is that while other Civs like Byzantine, where people are still figuring out how to play the Civ well, the difference yeah. is the 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 skills floor is a little higher and mm -hmm. people haven't figured out how to respond yet but once people figure out how to best play against her it'll go back to normal it's the same thing where when the game first came out and even for the first year people were so frustrated by french knights i can't beat french knights i can't beat french knights but now no one really cares because everyone's played enough to know how to counter french knights in in any single game um, is, it, is it not just spearmen is there something else you gotta no, do for there but it's like how like you you have to be a little bit more on alert. How You have to kind of change the nice. star a little bit to respond to knights. And okay. people would post stuff like, Spearmen don't counter knights, I lost the knights. You'd watch the the game and they didn't get out enough Spearmen. They got out yeah, three like Spearmen three and they lost yeah. the three knights. It's like, yeah, that's that's what happens. Like, mm -hmm. it's the But people didn't understand that yet. So I think once people play against Jandark more, they'll be like, here's... And, and if the pros already kind of have it figured out a little bit. You don't fight them in feudal. You rush castle. You get like you you avoid fights. You you play a little bit more defensive. And I've watched plenty of pros beat other pros play Gen Dark. It's not a play to win. Um, and I want to do a quick buzz through of both the games you play because I think there's both positives and negatives. Something to draw out of that between those two okay. games. Sounds good. So your opening is really strong. You open up exactly as the build order that your following recommends. Mm -hmm. Your scouting is a lot better. You go center and immediately cut right. The thing I'd be, I'd try to do as you get better APM as you're playing and you can do a little bit more. You hug this side very closely. Which I, that means I thought that, about that too. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you think that's a problem? Well, I can see how much visual is past the yellow line, out, like out of bounds. That's mm -hmm. wasted vision essentially. That could be in bounds. Mm -hmm. And what? You know? And what's the purpose of scouting in the Dark Age? What are you getting from scouting? Uh, finding the resources, essentially. I could potentially find the boars early, mm -hmm. the grind, the XP, uh, other deer camps, big gold mines, you know, stuff like that. And the next tier thought process when I open up to you is, where am I going, my villagers? Like, what is, if this game goes long, where are my openings? Right. Where am I naturally expanding? What do I protect yeah. as i'm being offensive because one of the purpose of being aggressive early is you're able to secure resources a little bit more safely mm -hmm. and so you notice like you barely saw this deer pack and we have no idea what's in this here and right. you, you will waste time running back to check this and then running through an area you already checked so my suggestion is kind of do a little bit of a zigzag pattern almost one don't hug the edge be mm -hmm. more in the middle but it's okay to kind of go up and back down and then back up and cut through this. Okay. It's much more important to catch where the resources are than hug the border. Though, you still got plenty of sheep. You got pretty good information. Um, besides that, as I said, your opening's looking good. You age up at a good time. You you rally to the goal knowing you want to get uh, 
what there we go knowing that you want to get out knights early something i noticed you did which was smart is that you overbuilt villagers i would rather you right now over queue villagers than forget to make mm -hmm. one always and right. what you could always do yeah. is if you really need to make a unit go back and delete two in the queue but always 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 over make villagers okay, that, early on yeah because there were times where I overmade villagers and then I couldn't get a night out when I needed to get a night out. Mm -hmm. and, and that's actually I would have to just go through and delete. Yeah, that's the situation right here. You hit and mm -hmm. you macroed this perfectly. You have five on gold. The one maybe twinge is you could do four on gold. No, because you're about to move John. So five on gold with John is perfect. I think okay. if you delete all these villagers, you have plenty for a night. So maybe get four on wood before you start adding more to food would be a small, yeah. small thing. But there's a yeah. question I want to ask you. You start sending these villas. You need to make the mill to get the upgrades. Totally. Why mm. do you why do you start sending them to berries? Uh, because, uh, well, I don't know, actually. That, that is kind of dumb. I had so many sheep that I could have just had them on sheep. Yeah, why oh. would you want to be on sheep instead of berries? Yeah, they're quicker. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, did, that, was the, that was a mistake. Mm. And efficiency in the early game, if you're an aggressive civ, efficiency is key. You need to get the most bang mm -hmm. for your bucks. You can get the most unit outs because you getting one more unit out than your opponent could be the difference between being able to cut off resources or not. Right. Um, and so it seems like a small thing, but as French, food heavy, you're getting 140 food nights. Right, yeah. Avoiding the berries. Mm -hmm. if you are, quicker. Yeah, if you're worried about getting food, here's a small thing you do differently. Instead of having your first bone be on the berries... Have your first spell be on your nearest deer pack. Okay. You are going to be the aggressive sit. Uh, unless you're playing like Delhi or you're playing, but even against Delhi, unless you're literally playing French or John Dark yourself, I would say your first one just go on the deer, like your closest deer pack. Okay. Um, because deer are so much food. And since you're going to be aggressive, your opponent is going to be building spearmen and sticking in their base early on. So that's your chance mm -hmm. to grab deer. What's the, let's say you go up to your opponent and you see they've built a stables. What does that potentially mean? The, they're probably going for a feudal rush as well. Well, the, yeah, depending on the sieve for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's a, it's a non-knight sieve. So English or China or any of them, they're going horsemen. They're putting on stables. That's horsemen. Can those horsemen fight your knights? No, but oh. they could try to pick off villagers. Exactly. Right? What you'll see some sieves do is. They'll get a couple spearmen out, and then they'll get two horsemen out. And their goal is, I'm going to harass them off the deer to buy myself some time. Okay. In that case, if you see stables, what should your response at home be? Spears. It could be spears. Your other option, but that takes time. You to put down a barracks and make the spearmen. So That's it could true. be that. And if they start to mass horsemen, sure. Your other option is just build, just drop a outpost. Okay. Per five villagers. Because if you have an outpost, horsemen can't burn that down. They, there won't be enough for them mm -hmm. in the game. But that's that's the thought process we need to go to. And that's the thought process you should start unlocking, which is I'm being aggressive, so I get the map. Oh, my right. opponent is making a unit that can get on the map. I will make sure I put up a, a tower per five villagers I have out on the map. And that's all you need to do. Because they if they make too many units to push on you, you just walk in their base and kill all the villagers. Right. So I have a I have a question then about if you so it's eight villagers to like efficiently harvest a boar right yes so in that case should you build two outposts just yes. to keep all those villagers safe okay yes. if you are afraid you they're actually moving that's why I suggest the second you kill the boar of the john you send out eight villagers and if you're being aggressive you don't need to put an out remember you only put an outpost if they're building units that can actually go raid you. right 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 um, yeah. But yes, if they're a neither knight sieve, if they're getting out horsemen, then put up two outposts, or at least get one up. If you're low on wood, get one up. That means you're only losing three villagers. Yeah. But get on that board immediately. It is the fastest, most efficient food, and you'll be able to get out so many knights that way. Anyway. Okay. And that's something I should have done this game then, too. Yeah. So you notice they're sending villagers out. You see the wood line. You see yeah. this, and almost lose your scout. A, an actual yeah. player would have killed your scout. Um, yeah. That was but, another instance of this. I don't know if the, is there a way to disable that where they'll auto like run in and attack because I'm not a moving. I'm just right clicking and then it just decides if, if, to. If, if it ends where there's an enemy, it will auto attack. I don't know okay. how to stop that, but I mean, it's better that's than exactly. it's standing there and dying. Yeah, um, that's true. 
It's just you have to basically when you get to the opposite corner of the map from your corner, you just have to be have eyes on your scout. You have to know at this point right. I'm getting close to their base. Um and watch that. Okay. But here's the thing. There is always one of each resource around a base, unless uh, except some special maps, but there is always mm. going to be a stone, a gold, a food of some sort, a wood line. Yep. So if you go around and you see a stone and a wood line, where's the gold? It's got to yeah, be. I knew, yeah, I knew the gold had to be there as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely should have scouted that more mm -hmm. throughout the game. And here's what you can do. Once you start getting uh, units out, just auto mm -hmm. run your scout through all the areas you haven't covered yet and have it end up in front of the opponent's base. Yep. I think that is actually what I did. Awesome. You also, I want it early on. You, when you're coming around here, you just sent the sheet back. Great. That was efficient. The thing I minded, I think I forgot to say is you should have got a night out the second you aged up, but now you're pumping them, which is great. Yeah. Here's my question for you. What should you make next? Look at your resources. Uh, probably. Uh, what do I have? I don't. I only have houses to stay. I don't have our archery range yet. I don't have a. I don't have a blacksmith. Mm -hmm. So I think your next um, thing is an archery engine and a yeah. blacksmith. Yeah. And why? Why would you want to go immediate archery range? Uh, because they have the javelin throwers that are going to melt my archers. Why and do you? I uh, want to get. Well, I want my archers to do more damage against their spearmen, too. Yep. You know they're, they're going to go spearmen. I mean, no yeah. matter what. Yep. So going archers is always safe. Yep. So, yeah, the I think the first two upgrades I did at the blacksmith were both the... I don't know the, I don't know the names of the technology, but both of the, the ranged uh, armor and damage ones. Yep. Here's the key. You did pretty chivalry early. pretty early. Yeah. I would say you do chivalry when... You have six or more knights, maybe even really? ten okay. or more knights. Yeah, because it's an expensive upgrade. It is yeah. hundred wood and two hundred gold. Instead, get your eco upgrades early. The reason being is eco upgrades pay off more over time. Okay. The first upgrade you should get, you should make one knight and then immediately get wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Okay. Why do you think wheelbarrow is so important? Uh, well, the, the movement speed is huge. Yes, that will save lives. Yeah. And when it's going out on the map, you want to get this deer, you want to get the boar, your villagers moving quickly and gathering faster mm -hmm. will get you more units. Like, it's it's that worth it. So instead of doing this upgrade, chivalry, instead do yep. wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow, survival techniques, which is huge for deer and boar, mm -hmm. and then double rod axe. Right, because you're gonna okay. start getting more and more wood villagers as you start making uh, archers. How much gold is chivalry again? Two hundred, right? Two hundred. So that is, and then that's seventy five. That's one hundred five. That's one hundred and five, and this is seventy. So you could have got yeah. broad. You could have got double broad axe, wheelbarrow, right. and basically survival techniques for the cost of chivalry. Yeah. Okay. And that's gonna pay off way more than healing a couple knights early in the game. Okay. Now yeah, I guess you... my thought. I sorry, my thought I guess was always, yeah, losing a knight that early is just a lot of mm -hmm. resources gone. So I I think I was just trying to be a little uh, protective of them. Mm -hmm. But I guess if I'm able to pump them out, then yeah, it wouldn't be a big issue, would it? No. And what you could always do is, if a knight gets really hurt, just send it back to base and let it sit until you get chivalry. Okay. Or because of Jean, just heal it up and have it be the backup knight right like, it just always always try to move it out yeah now that's a lot well, of micro but so just yeah to say, you could always just i'm just gonna send this one back i know i'll get chivalry eventually that's gonna get healed on its own at some point so another noob question here so how does that like passive healing work do they just have to be within range of the town center or royal knights regenerate one health every one second when out of combat oh no no i mean without chivalry though oh they don't heal at all oh okay Okay, gotcha. So I'm I'm just saying that to preserve the knight. Let's say you have a knight that's on like ten mm. health. Yeah, just send it back yeah. to base. Let it let it sit next to the school of cavalry until okay, it's healed up. Um, now that gotcha. my first, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Did you have another question? Uh, no, that should be it. Okay, so I love you killed this boar. A moved it over here, and then you have three knights and John. You could be going in right now, but you sit here. Yeah. Why was that? 
Uh, so I knew that they were gonna send something out, and th- this was bad uh, job paying attention. Mm-hmm. But I knew that I knew that that w- that far edge of the quarry was outside of town center range, mm-hmm. and I knew by attacking it they were gonna send some units out. And uh, I was just farm. I was gonna farm XP as I ran out, essentially. So here's the thing: that's mm-hmm. what the AI would do. Do you think a person would just send one unit at a time out at you? Yeah, probably not. No. I should have been getting on villagers. What they're gonna do is they're gonna be like, "Oh, he wants to attack my waymark, sure." And they would build. If it was the Malians, at least they would build an archery range. They would build a barracks, and all of a sudden right. you would have you'd have six Donzos attack you out of nowhere because like six mm. Donzos would be three knights, um, maybe, but like close enough, right? But no matter what, they would wait you out, and yeah. So you're wasting time here. Instead, it would have been much more effective if you just ran in and attacked this wood line and then ran out. Right. The yeah. You know what is really hurting you, though, is that your scout's back here. Scout, yep. Yep. Now, here's what's okay. It's okay to send a knight around and have it sit here because if you attack their gold mine, mm-hmm. where's the gold mine they can go to? This back one. Yeah, that one. So it's okay to have a knight, have your fourth or fifth knight, on the on the resource that you think they can go because remember the point of scouting is where can they go right you should have noticed this is juicy for you because two yep. of their golds are right next to each other yeah along with their deer pack so you just existing here means that they're only the resources are this deer mm-hmm. this berry bush and this gold and you just send one knight back here or if you're low on food, just make another scout and put it where they could go. The second they move their villagers, your knights are going there to kill them. Right. That's the power of your sieve is you don't let them breathe. You don't let them leave their base without yeah. being punished for that. Right. Instead, and that's my biggest gripe about this, is that you sit here and don't do anything. Now, the AI's yeah. dumb and sends, like, the AI's dumb and will send out a Musafati warrior to attack you. But yeah. a normal player... The human's not going to do that, yeah. yeah. Why'd you go out for this stone? Uh, I didn't. I don't know. I was just. Uh, I think I was at the point where okay, I'm just constantly getting these other resources, and mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do with villagers. Yeah. So. So let's check your resources right now. You're at twelve, eight, ten. How are How are you doing on production here? I, um, I think it's okay. I just need. I just have a surplus of food. Yeah, and that's because you're not making nights. But, yeah. But right now, with your gold mount, you can only make three nights a minute. Okay. And you can make, yeah, two three nights a minute is uh, two two and a half with your current food amounts. Mm-hmm. I like that you're going wood because you can't make archers now because you don't have enough wood. Right. So I should have just gone wood with that villager? You're, you're, you're doing that. Just keep rallying. You want to get to about 10 to constantly make archers. Yeah. But as you get more and more food, drop another stable so you can make double knights. So, like, the idea is, like, as you're checking, be like, I'm going to add one more production building. I'm going to add one more production mm-hmm. building. Because as you get more villagers, you'll be able to afford it. And if you were right. on this boar, if you're on these deer, you could definitely afford to produce two knights at a time. Yep, that's going to be something I uh, I do in my next games then, for sure. Because that's but, a lot of food that's just sitting there. Mm-hmm. And it's free because he can't leave. You're right. You have to attack here for free. So that's it. I don't need to belabor the point. Um, you miss these villagers right here, but the bonus here is you showed you could mass enough units to beat the AI. Yeah, he could not outmass you. You also use Jean's powers. You consecrated the town center. You consecrated the school of Calvary. Awesome. You do hit castle though. Were you meaning to hit castle? Uh, no, I didn't actually. I just, I, as soon as I hit castle, I was like, what? And mm-hmm. I looked down and I saw I had a ton of food and gold. So this tells I me. Think, yeah. No, no, what are you going to say? Uh, and But as soon as I hit it, I was like, ah, I might as well just do it. Yeah. So. That's okay. You have the advantage. The but upgrade. what this tells me yeah. is you could have had a lot more army. Right. You don't have that army because one, you're probably not making units. Or you don't have enough production to make the amount of units you could afford. Right. So just make sure that all your production is on a hot key and you're mm-hmm. constantly making it until you're like, nope, it's time to go castle. Which, if you yeah. can't quite break them, yeah, just keep your army, go castle. Upgrade your army, go in. But mm-hmm. right now your goal should be, let's try to win these fights in feudal 
um, early on right now to see if we can do that. Right. Okay. So that's it for this match. Uh, I do want to watch the Byzantine one real fast just because I think that sets up it, uh, there's there's a couple things you do in here that I think are are really really good from the jump. Okay. I want to I want to capture. So great capture. You just send them straight back, which actually kind of works. I would not potentially do that on the center ones because there's a good chance an enemy scout would have also run in right there. Okay. So does the enemy scout just have to like meet with the sheep to grab them yeah. then, or yeah? If it okay. ran, if the enemy scout ran by your sheep when they weren't near a building, they would have auto joined them. I see. Okay. You did a much better job though on this one, circling around and seeing where all the resources. You need to get this spot, but you saw the main yep. stuff. You also saw that you're the Byzantine Wind Imperial Hippodrome. That's the horse landmarks. You should put cavalry. Yep. Your knight should beat their cavalry. Straight up. Okay. I thought uh, I thought cataphracts were the best cavalry in the game. You don't get them to go castle. To castle, okay. Now, this does mean though, he might run the strategy of I'm gonna get out two horsemen and raid. So right. this is the type of moment you go, ooh, early stables. If I when I go on the map, I should drop a outpost just to make sure I'm I'm my right. saving villagers. This time you okay. actually go in immediately. This was awesome. When you did this, I was really like, perfect. You got you killed the boar, you killed this boar down here. You haven't even killed the boar yet. You just went in and attacked villagers. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. And then Yeah. I knew the I knew the wolf. Yeah. But this was perfect. You you got away. And then you went over and immediately killed a boar in your spare time. Like, this was an amazing use of your time. Mm -hmm. You went in, killed two villagers, did not overstay your welcome, got out, and are now going to kill these two boar that happened to spawn right next to each other. I just want to point out that's just a really strong use of time. And while that's happening, you are rallying to the halfway point. Yeah. Eventually, when your micro gets better, you can go kill this boar and send in two knights here and have the third knight circle around and then you have the third knight hit the gold while they're attacked you know like that's the stuff you build up to yeah like use, yeah. using these knights to sow chaos but right now that was a great use build up your force you're getting archers out oh you're gonna go in maybe not no i don't i don't think i do until jean gets back up there i also like the split of resources right now you're able you're getting out knights look how many archers you're making look at your resources what do you need another of mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely need another... I could probably use another stable, for sure. Mm -hmm. Was 16 uh, on wood, though? That suggests two archery ranges. Yeah, I did I did, uh, I did. did catch that as well. I was like, okay, I, I think I've got too much on wood. I think I redirected some of them. Yeah, the, rally don't, don't even redirect. Just rally to, rally yeah. to a food source. I um, think I did rally to berries, actually, now that you mention it. I'm not sure. But... but you could be having double archers out right now, and you have the wood to do it. You could have dropped a second archery range and a second right. table. And be making double units. So you can mm -hmm. have more units out, but you're still making a good amount. This is actually, though, once again, you've taken the map control. You just killed this boar. Go take the boar or go get this deer here. Mm -hmm. And I believe I do actually jump on the deer at some point. I just remember. But yeah, I, should, I think you make sure on that earlier. Huh? No, don't chase the horseman around. It's not worth it. Um, oh. At this point, but this is once again, you're too passive. You have so yep. much military. The second you get Jean okay. back, just keep poking. Go here, okay. back up, rotate. Go here, back up, rotate. And just keep checking. Also, when you get okay. that many knights, check the resources. Here's kind of a fun fact. If you look at the deer pack, and there are mm -hmm. less than seven deer, they're on the deer pack. In the fog of war, it will delete the deer as they start to use them. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So if you if I go over here and I see there's five deer, I'm sending yeah. a horseman over there. For you, you should send a knight. So they don't the it doesn't work for berry packs, I don't think. But once you push them off gold, send a knight to the nearest gold. So the idea is I'm gonna pre-think the resources they have to go through because of my reaction. Your goal right. in aggressive is to cause a reaction, which means think ahead. Where do they have to go if I force this reaction? Mm-hmm. But then you walk in, and here's another thing you improved on from last time. You're going to walk in, you're going to start fighting, and you're going to realize they don't have enough to kill them. And you just sit here. Yeah. Do it. Just 
Just fight them. Just kill them. Destroy this. Doesn't matter. My one qualm is they obviously have villagers probably hiding somewhere else. They don't. You actually killed all of them. Just kidding. But the point being is this was hard AI just to beat you and you crush them. Yeah. You crushed them. Yeah, the uh, the night rush is pretty uh pretty good. It mm -hmm. turns out. Okay. So and then you go on deer here, correct? But you also made this look all look all this wasted wood right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's a, but overall, what we asked you to do, you improved on heavily. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to what I say is your next goal here. One, scouting 2.0. Yeah. Scouting 2.0 is get as much of the map on your first go around. And two, locate each of the starting resources and the secondary resources. You have to ask yourself, where's my opponent? Ha where's my opponent going to be at the start? Where's my opponent going to have to go? Right. Two, Continue work on macro, that macro cycle. Am I making villagers? Am I making units? How's my resources looking? What do I need to change? What am I trying to do? Do I need archers? Can I just make a lot of knights and move those resources to match that? Three, use the resources on the map. I am the aggressive civ. I go take advantage of the map's resources. When do you need to be more careful? Uh, if they're... If, well, if they're able to pressure my villagers, essentially, right? Yep. So, but only do that if you actually think they can do that. Don't don't overreact. Right. And lastly, your this is going to be your goal for a long time. Be aggressive. Mm -hmm. be, be aggressive. Yep. At this point, Amzo and I played a game against each other, so you could finally test out what it's like to play against the person. I decided to do a fast castle build to throw him a little bit of a wrench, and once again work on the thinking through of how do I respond in the middle of a game to when my opponent does something. So as we're going in, go ahead and give me, what do you think you did well? What do you think you need to do better? Just before we even look at the replay. Ooh, uh, I think that was a pretty rough game in general on my part. Uh, microwing, for sure. I hit a lot of the wrong keys, which was really irritating. That's, that's how it like, happens. That's a me thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's a me thing. Um... Uh, I, it kind of, like, I didn't get enough archers out to count, counter the spearmen, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, my resource gathering, I think, was kind of, kind of dog water. <laughs> um, because I, I definitely wasn't getting units out quick enough. I, I had a decent amount of knights, but once this, the tons of spearmen, the spearmen on top of the town center having the cannon is kind of... Mm -hmm. Kind of puts a puts a damper on anything if you need to get in like within range of that to kill villagers. Yep. Um, I played a very compacted base until I felt safe. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that was definitely part of it. I felt like I couldn't get in there really with the night rush at all. So yeah, what did what did I do to combat your night rush? Because I admittedly I knew what you're going to do, but most people are going to guess that you as Jun Deck are going to come at them in feudal. What did I do? Right. Turtled up, produced uh, military units, or well, spearmen. You, you know, you. I think you produced more units than me. I would have to assume. But I also produced higher quality Maybe. units. I, I rushed castle. Okay. Did gotcha. you, did you notice I hit castle? Yeah. Okay. So, Zuchi's legacy mm -hmm. has the ability to get to feudal and castle really fast. Okay. Um, and so against Jan Dark. And I, I've messed around with this. I've played as Giant Dark on their ladder a little bit. And if I play against someone's Sushi Legacy, that's the strategy they use on me. They go fast castle gotcha. so they can get units out. And it's hard for me to get there in time to punish them for going fast castle. Because it's a super right. fast castle. And then yeah. I produced a unit called Shallon Monk. So that's special to the Sushi Legacy. They're a monk that's a very good 1v1. And that monk could 1v1 one of your knights. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and in feudal form. Uh, and so... You would need two knights to kill one of my Shaolin monks, and I tried to produce enough of those. In that final fight I took, I had about five of them in there. Along okay. with my own knights, along with spearmen, and I was starting to get crossbowmen out too. So I went fast castle to try to combat your units. And so right. when when I hit castle, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the replay, but um, I thought your strategy actually could have worked. You could have attacked me right before my power spike hit and took me out. 
but you needed to do a little bit more threatening before that point. So let's let's watch your let's watch your gathering here. So you do so much better scouting pattern. You pretty much got all of this side correctly. Love it. You drop off the sheet. You head up. You notice your back deer pack. This is such a great spot right here. I thought that was great. The one on that deer. And back. You start aging up, but your opening's correct. Why'd you make Why'd you make a second scout? I wanted to uncover the other half of the map mm. quicker. Okay. Or no, the, well, the second the second scout was to scout you while I used the first one to uncover the rest. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. As long as it doesn't slow down your age up, um, I think the value then, if you want, if you, I would have that scout be on whatever back resources I might run to. So okay. if you have your army on the left side, the other scout should have been on this side. Gotcha. Because at one point I ran out of resources and I had to go over here and get some and that would have been your chance to punish me before my power spike hits you lose this one that sucks yeah yeah then uh that tc hurt a lot more than i thought it would <laughs> I, I happen to have like six villagers right next to it so i garrisoned real fast so okay. you saw this you notice i'm gathering i'm right in tc range you notice that's going to be our attack spot this gold is not in tc range I yep. should see you queue up a knight right now. There it is. Okay. About 30 seconds late, but still much better timing. Rally these knights to where you're going to want to attack. I uh, I kind of set them off to the side because I didn't want them running through the town center. Mm. So I, if you need to have them avoid, so you actually shit click the movement. So you can, like click and then click again to bend around something. But if okay. I was you, I would have sent them here immediately. Okay. Right here. Because you know you're going to run in and hit that gold right there. So if you sent okay. them to this border, then run them have been fine. And one little sneaky okay. thing you can do is first two knights go here, third knight goes here. Right. Because at some point, I'm going to need more food. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you're scouting still. You actually could have run over and grabbed these sheep real fast. If you had run the scout right here, you could have commanded the sheep to jump on the scout. Okay. Age of John. You go and kill the spore. Your build's still looking good. And here's the mindset you need to have. If you're playing someone who's higher ranked than you, this is your chance mm -hmm. to learn. Don't be afraid to lose. Too often when I played someone much higher ranked than me when I first started playing, I get really scared. I was like, I have to perform right here. Fuck that. You're still learning. So like, right. just play loose. Assume you're going to lose. Just play your best yeah, game. Yeah, and, I did for sure. So, and and that's and that's what I'm saying. Like when you're like silver and you're playing like a high gold, don't be like, mm -hmm. oh, this guy's gonna outclass me. Just be like, I'm just gonna play my game. I'm gonna learn from it. Uh, they they're gonna do something that I'm gonna learn from. Right. In this game, I love that you melee went for this deer. Make sure that the mill goes in the center of the deer. What you what I would have suggested is one, don't send all the villagers at once. Oh, did you run out of okay. deer? I mean sheep. I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's what you could have done instead. Right when you aged up, if you know you're low on deer, immediately send half the villagers that are on sheep to the deer. Okay. That would allow your sheep to last longer and also makes it so you're not waiting on your food to pop up. You know what I mean? Now you have this right, weird yeah. space where you have no food. Yeah, no food. So if you're like, I don't have a lot of sheep. Okay, I aged up. I'm going to send half my villagers immediately to the deer. Mm -hmm. Once you get five more and they start sitting on the deer, where should you send the other villagers on food? Oh, uh, wait, I uh, sorry, repeat that. So so you so you age up. Our yep. plan is you should send half your food villagers to the deer. Yeah, so the other half to berries. Mm-mm. Oh. Once you've started collecting the deer. Oh the boar. To the boar. It's two thousand food. Right. And I never touched that. I I could not raid that because you were blocking that side. So I raided your deer. Right. But you see me gathering, you see one spearman. Mm hmm. And you're in your knights out. You rally to here. Nope, rally all the way up. I'm not going to be there yet. Even if it's just to the front of the base, you're losing time. And when it comes to doing damage on me, if I'm rushing castle, every second matters. Because you're just letting okay. me get up right now. Okay. You have four knights. Okay. So these knights, 
you should have already been raiding me. I only had one spearman out. I did soup. Look at this. I have two okay. spearmen out. Four mm -hmm. knights beat two spearmen. Yep. In fact, since I'm aging up, I have no resources. So if you're if you're continuously scouting around my base and you see I'm aging up to castle, you just send those knights in. You could have killed those yeah. guys. You could have yeah. pushed me off this. And even if you lose those knights, you could have delayed my age up so hard that I it would it would have been hard for me to maintain after that. Okay. Yeah. See, I think then uh, part of it is I'm underestimating how much effect on aging up I can. Yeah. So you already hit castle. Dude, so I think I'm underestimating how much damage i can do to your fucking age up there you can do a lot you won't stop it but you could kill some right. villagers and yeah because i have nothing to stop you two spearmen are not going to stop four knights and if jean's in there definitely not right so the second here's the thing we keep in mind if you if someone ages up way before you expect them to you have to attack right then especially mm -hmm. if you're making units you've got to attack because you have to do damage okay. you can't let me get to castle for free right so if, what oh sorry go ahead yeah, go for it no, no. so like i don't know your faction at like at all mm -hmm. what big upgrades do you get in castle that i have to be aware of it's not necessarily upgrades it's units so i'm gonna get the crossbow well, yeah yeah I'm, okay the crossbow I'm, gonna the I'm gonna get the shaolin monk which is good uh -huh. 1v1 okay so that's a castle unit got gotcha. you i tried to get relics so i immediately went for this relic this relic this relic okay I, I saw you I saw you cross into the sacred site, so mm -hmm. it's a good thing to keep in mind. If someone rushes castle this early, they're probably trying to get relics. So what you can right. do is send a normal sieve, you could just send one knight, they'd kill it, but for Zush Zushis, mm -hmm. you'd have to do two knights on a on a relic. But honestly, it would have been more important if you just do damage. Right. Um if someone castles super, super early, you have to know he had no resources to build units. There's no way he has okay. units out. And your and your scout even told you that. I had one barracks and one spearman last time you checked. There's no way I have right. more than that. So, like, you just have to go. Because you have two options when when this happens. What do you what do you, what do you so I hit castle, you're trying to attack me in feudal. What are your options? Now that you're already in castle. Mm -hmm. Well, I either gotta turtle up or I really gotta go for it now. Yep, that's you it's, right. that's literally it. You either hard yeah. back up and you turtle up. And you try to catch up, or you just gotta go for it. And let me tell you, right. your sieve is one that could fight a little bit into castle and stay in feudal because of knights. Knights allow you to play longer in feu in mm -hmm. castle while you're still in feudal. And you could kill me. Like if you had been pressuring me earlier, if you had been getting in with knights faster, and then building up a force of archers, you build two rams, and I don't have the resources to actually fight you. Because right now my problem. Is that I don't really have the resources. I don't even have enough production. Up. Like, look at my base. Right. I can't fight you with this. I'm hoping yeah. that you'll be passive. And I'm just going to try to turtle my way out of it. Mm -hmm. But you could have toured through villagers right now. Right. And made me pay for that. Okay. So and I got to not be afraid of the town center. Basically. Can't be afraid so... of it. Run, don't stay under it, but go in and hit and run. Hit and run. Hit and run. Right. Um... And also, the second you saw me build a stable, you should have been like, he's going to try to raid my food. Like, okay. so this is good. So you come right here. And I realized I'm kind of fucked here. Like, I have two spearmen. He has four horsemen. I can't fight this. Mm. So I immediately run. And I run away. Yep. And you run. And I was relieved, honestly. I was relieved okay. when you when you walked away. Oh, okay. Because here's, here's what you need to do at this point. You just run through and attack my wood villagers. You just mm. this knight goes just, in and attacks my wood villagers. Just just tank the town center shots then. I guess. Early on, yeah. The okay. person you can't lose is Jean. Like once Jean has to get low, run away. But right. or just sit here. Like you don't have to go and tank it. Just sit on this gold. I should get yeah, no keep more the gold. villagers off of it. Yeah, I should right. get no more okay. gold. Sit here. I should get no more food. If you just sat here and never let my villagers go back on resources, I'm done. Right. Okay. If and then as these sit here and you run in, you start picking off villagers that I don't have hidden in the town center. Mm -hmm. What are you what are you learning from this? Like what what is, what's the what's the thought process you're taking away here? Uh my it's so the big thing is I need to um I just had it in my head. 
I need to see the buildings that are down and recognize what my opponent's game plan is going to be a little bit better against the AI. It's not, I don't have that issue so much, but in this, I was like, okay, I just see these buildings and I know that he's going to be trying to pump out Spearman. I knew that was coming, but yeah, then I just kind of shied away from keeping up the pressure because I was afraid that if I lose Knights, that I was going to get behind mm -hmm. and then get pressured. And it was the opposite that happened. Mm -hmm. So you let me catch up because you have to, yeah. it's, it's recognized I'm making, it's also recognizing what am I capable of? What am I capable of right now? Like, right. I'm capable of making a Spearman every 15 seconds mm -hmm. and a few other units, but I don't have enough. And if I just hit castle, I have no resources. Right. So like go in there and, and make me pay for it so that you can catch up. Even if you had okay. just decided at this point, I'm going to cut production and rush castle. I'm going to take five units off wood and put them on food. I'm going to rally to gold. That's fine. You use this to keep me in my base. If you just sat mm -hmm. here and went castle, you, that would have been better. Okay. But like pressure me so I can't take advantage of what I'm trying to do, which if I go castle, I'm trying to get enough resources to get castle units out. Right. Cool. A lot of people when they're playing the game, if their opponent hits castle, they freak out. And if you watch a pro game, anytime if they're if they're making units and their opponent hits castle, they go in immediately. They have to go in because you cannot okay. let your opponent just get that tech advantage over you with for no response. Right. Um. Lastly, and then I, and then I gotta go. But lastly, um, mm. you're gonna play a bunch against a bunch of civs. You have no idea what they do, yeah. and you're just gonna have to learn through it. Yeah. The the basic counters will always hold, but if you see a unique unit, try your best to adjust to it in the moment, and then after the game, watch the replay. Click on the unit and go. What beats this unit? If I see this again, what do I what do I do against this? Right. And you're just gonna have to self replay and figure out. There have been times when I played the new civs where I right after a game will then go to the about them page in the game and just look at their <laughs> stuff again and go, oh, that's that's what that does. That's what okay. But yeah, it, it, it makes you remember. Actually, uh, after last session when I played against the Mollies, you said they were the worst Civ I could go against typically. I actually played one game as the Mollies just to see what everything was. Yeah, you should do that. That's smart. It gave me a way better understanding of it. Mm -hmm. So The first time I played against Sushi as John Dark and one mm -hmm. Melk beat the shit out of one of my knights, I was like, I, I, I'm i never forgetting that. <laughs> Ever. I was dumbstruck. So, like, that's that's part of the learning process. But my suggestion to you, man, is you just... you you. Hop in a quick player, hop in a ranked, and just start playing games. See what happens. Because then my feedback to you will get a lot more pointed once you start playing real people. Right. All right, man. Great job. Just to, just to right. once, once again reiterate what you should be focusing on. Be aggressive. Overcommit yep. and learn from it. Okay. Continue to check your resources and adjust based on what you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. Use your aggression allows you to use the map. Use the resources on the map. Right. And make units and villagers. Always be making units and villagers. You're trying to win in feudal right now. We'll worry about everything else later. Okay. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna play some games. Try to go out in a blaze of glory and feudal, and so and you'll and you'll learn from it. That's the best way to do it. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, man. Take care. See you next week.